Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, uh, welcome everybody to this last talk of today. Uh, we're going to hear Matteo Rulli talk about Keraf, uh, the crossroads of IoT and uh, Java. So okay, thank you. So, good evening everyone. Thank you for coming. And today I'd like to share with you our experiences in using Apache Keraf project uh, to uh, quickly prototype and build new applications in OSGI. So our company is called Flarebit. It's just a, a startup. We started our operations in October. So for us, the, uh, the challenge was to provide some demo application and some real things to showcase to our prospects in a very short amount of time, just to demonstrate that, it, that we are real. So uh, on the other hand, it is always the case that you, you read around in the, in the blog post and in the discussions that OSGI is a very complicated technology to use. So we try to uh, solve this problem, leveraging Apache Caraf to, uh, fast, to fast and, and quickly provide solutions and applications uh, that we need to showcase and to de demonstrate what we were capable to do. So uh, just a brief introduction about me. Uh, as I said, I founded with uh, uh, some colleague a new company called Flarebit, uh, mainly active in the telemetry, machine-to-machine -machine, and the Internet of Things space. And we provide consultancy services and verticalization for uh, domains like smart agriculture, connected product, and healthcare. Um, with our skills, we uh, try to cover uh, a good part of the IoT stack, ranging from data acquisition up to data distribution and data visualization. Uh, and it's very nice to see how uh, completely different technologies like JavaScript and HTML5 can be combined very easily with OSGI leveraging the new specifications related to uh, the HTTP service and, and, and uh, the whiteboard pattern. So, and all this is implemented in Apache Car, of, of course. Um, just a brief uh, uh, outline for this presentation. So. Um, the first step will be to provide a, a minimal uh, IoT shop list, so a sort of a minimal technology stack that we can use in order to implement a very simple demo for the IoT uh, domain. After that, uh, I'll introduce uh, the main tool that we used to implement this uh, de demo, which is Apache Caraf, and then we'll uh, um, see how uh, you can add a, a persistence service uh, within OSGI leveraging the Java Persistence API and, to combine, and how to combine JPA in OSGI. Then, of course, you need to communicate uh, both the remote device, that could be a Raspberry Pi, as in this demo, or whatever device you have to integrate, and you have also to communicate with the front end. And uh, for these two uh, communication flows, you typically use different technologies. So we'll use MQTT transport to communicate uh, with the Raspberry Pi, and uh, we'll use web sockets to communicate with the front end and the JavaScript world. And after that, you need also some RESTful APIs to make your demo more interactive. And then, of course, you need to document your APIs. And I think that Swagger is uh, uh, one of the de facto standard to do document, document RESTful APIs. So we'll introduce Swagger as well. 
And then you need uh, some sort of front end in order to, uh, well, uh, access the demo and to, and to show and to demonstrate the data that you gather from the field. So you have to build some sort of front end and you can host this uh, uh, content uh, leveraging the HTTP service of OSGI specifications. And of course, Apache Caraf is not enough because then you need also a development environment and we used uh, BND tools for that. So our development activities uh, w uh, are based on BND tools toolchain. So after that, I'll try to uh, set up a quick demo and uh, a wrap up slide. So, <clears throat> of course, this is not a full uh, technology stack for IoT because this is far, mm, far more complex than that, but a minimal uh, technology stack to provide a decent uh, demo could be this one. So you need a library to control the Raspberry Pi input output. Uh, in particular, we use the Raspberry Pi with a new Sense Hut. Uh, it's just a daughter board that you can mount on the Raspberry Pi with some LED and some sensors like temperature, humidity. Uh, it has a motion uh, sensor, an accelerometer, a magnetometer, something very uh, useful to uh, create a demo. Uh, then you need uh, a library to communicate the Raspberry Pi with the backend, and we use the uh, MQTT implementation called PAO, provided by uh, this uh, open source project. Uh, then we need uh, some sort of communication, uh, two channel, two way communication link between the backend and the uh, Raspberry Pi. So you can combine MQTT and RESTful APIs to uh, push command and configurations to the, to the Pi. Then uh, also, uh, some sort of persistence service is needed on the backend to persist the data and the configuration. So we'll introduce JPA. And finally, a, a graphical user interface can be added uh, leveraging HTTP service. So more or less, you need a way to quickly create the runtime to sustain all these pieces and to aggregate all these technology pieces together. And we found Apache Caraf a very uh, useful environment to build these kind of runtimes. Uh, basically, Apache Caraf is a, an OSGI runtime that provides additional capabilities for uh, bundle provisioning. So it is possible to install bundles in the runtime leveraging subsystem specification or uh, a proprietary uh, version of this uh, provided in Caraf that are called Caraf features. Uh, we'll see them in action in a moment. It has a very powerful remote SSH console to manage and monitoring uh, what is happening inside the container. And uh, most important, it has out of the box support for a very nasty uh, OSGI runtimes like uh, Apache CXF or ActiveMQ or Camel. It, if you have to configure OSGI runtimes for these kind of projects, it is usually very time consuming. In Caraf, as we'll see in a moment, it's just a matter of install a feature, and then you get your runtime for CXF or ActiveMQ up and running in a few seconds. So it's quite convenient to uh, save time. Uh, and of course, Caraf has many other cool features that, uh, uh, that are not used during this deck, but are quite uh, useful in many other use cases. Okay, this is the, the, the shape, this is the face of uh, a CARA feature. So when you want to install uh, a certain set of bundles like the Active MQ runtime or the Apache Camera runtime, basically uh, those projects describe their dependencies in terms of a set of bundles and possibly other external features. Uh, once you get this file, then you can just run this command in Caraf uh, shell, feature install and the feature name, and Caraf uh, automatically will download from Maven Central all the dependencies declared in the feature file and will install all these bundles in your runtime, creating uh, the uh, set of bundles that you need in order to deploy your uh, uh, custom ext extensions based on Camel, uh, ActiveMQ, CXF, Swagger, and so on and so forth. So in particular, what we needed for our simple demo was uh, JPA support. So we installed uh, all related JPA bundles in terms of uh, related features. 
Then we need a, a RESTful API support, and we use CXF feature for that. Then we stash MQTT and WebSocket support in the recipe, declaring all the required features in CARF. And then we add HTTP service support uh, in terms of the corresponding feature, HTTP, HTTP whiteboard, WarFi support, and of course, the application server, we use Jetty for that. Uh, the interesting point, as I said before, is that with this single command, you can create all the runtime that you need in order to uh, install your bundles and have your runtime up and running. So uh, no manual configuration or editing of files uh, where you declare the bundle that you need. Um, oh, and of course, this is a command, but you can automate this procedure. Uh, Caraf has plenty of configuration files when you can stash these kind of comments to get them automatically executed as soon as the uh, container starts. And so as soon as Caraf starts, it, it would download all these features automatically and would create the runtime that you need uh, without that you uh, uh, manually uh, invoke the install command. So I think that it's particularly useful for JPA because uh, to create an OSGI runtime for a, a JPA is quite uh, time consuming because you need different pieces uh, together. Uh, you need Apache Arias as a wrapper, as an implementer for a JPA specifications for, of OSGI specifications. Then you need a provider for JPA, it could be OpenJPA. Then you need the, the distributed transaction provider, this could be Apache Geronimo. Then you have to set up your data sources to interact with the database. And for that, you need another project that could be OPS for j Pax, JDBC. And finally, you uh, probably want to add also connection pooling support. And for that, you need another set of bundles uh, that, that are uh, the DBCP2 uh, project. So this is, as I said, just a matter of invoking a couple of CARAF commands, and you can get all these bundles up and running in your environment. And uh, in particular, also when it comes to deal with uh, uh, data source configuration, um, CARAF is very handy because it integrates uh, config admin uh, natively. So you can leverage config admin, for instance, to create the data sources automatically out of your configuration files. So that means that if you stash this couple of files in your uh, file install folder, then automatically CARAF um, uses this configuration file to create the data source that you need in order to interact with, in this case, the MySQL database. And uh, the nice thing is that you can avoid uh, hard coding uh, the connection string in uh, um, data source bundles. They are just files, they live in the file system, so uh, you can just uh, uh, bootstrap and, and configure your data sources with a couple of configuration files. And a similar approach can be used for uh, uh, bootstrapping the connector for MQTT, for instance. So in this case, uh, you can use the blueprint specification to bootstrap the MQTT connector. So here again, we are using, uh, first of all, the config admin uh, provided by Apache Caraf in order to basically provide some configuration properties for our uh, camel root. And then we use a camel context to open up an MQTT connection to, um, on, a, on, a config, on a configured uh, TCP port. And, uh, and we can subscribe to a specific topic to consume the data generated by the Raspberry Pi. So as you can see, there is this uh, nice, uh, nice way to uh, use uh, configuration admin properties in the camel root with this double uh, curly bracket. And so you can reference externally provided properties in your uh, root configuration. And this is enough, as I said, to uh, listen uh, to a specific uh, uh, data stream coming in uh, a topic of your choice. 
Then, of course, the camel route to uh, listen MQTT data is not enough. Then you need a broker as well. And for that, you can use ActiveMQ, for instance. And again, the configuration is quite, sim it's quite simple. Uh, this is another configuration file that can be used in order to bootstrap ActiveMQ and to provide the transport connector that you need in order to, uh, well, uh, have MQTT up and running. So with uh, just uh, um, a blueprint bundle and a configuration file, we created the camel route that we need to listen for MQTT messages, and uh, we spin up the MQTT broker in order to manage the data streams coming from our Raspberry Pi board. And the, am the amount of code that we uh, had to develop for that is zero, because it's, everything is uh, managed by configuration files. And then we can add uh, API support in a similar way. So again, it's just a matter of um, providing a blueprint configuration file. And in this blueprint configuration file, what you need to do is to declare a new JAXRS server. We uh, use Apache CXF to publish this server. And uh, Apache CXF can be configured through blueprint. So, uh, here we basically are instantiating a new service pin uh, that has this component ID. And then we also add uh, support for uh, Swagger to document our RESTful APIs. And these two pins, this feature and these pins are uh, instantiated here. So here we are, we have our API provider. And then we can configure the Swagger feature in this way, providing some basic configuration properties that would be used by Swagger to, uh, to uh, provide um, documentation for our APIs. So again, uh, no need to uh, develop uh, interceptor or filters manually. It's just a matter of uh, 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 configuring things within the, the, the blueprint configuration files. Of course, the only implementation that you need is the uh, service pin where you declare and implement your APIs, but this is unavoidable. For the rest, it's just a matter of configuration. And the final step, as I uh, mentioned in, in the presentation outline, is to provide some sort of front end to, well, represent your data uh, into a web page. So for that, we used AngularJS, and we leverage the RESTful APIs to communicate to the backend. So uh, Angular libraries uh, have a very nice support for uh, RESTful APIs. So on the front-end side, all you have to do is just to invoke the uh, endpoint that we just published uh, through the blueprint configuration file that we saw before. And then you can uh, uh, just uh, wrap this front-end, JavaScript front-end, uh, within a, a web uh, bundle. And to do that, it's just a matter of four lines uh, of configurations in your BND file. So you can take all the JavaScript and HTML, and HTML resources that you have. You can wrap uh, all these resources in a web file using these four lines of configuration within your BND files. And what you get is a web that you can deploy within CARF. So you can uh, have uh, RESTful APIs, MQTT connector, and the web application, all, these, all those pieces up and running within uh, the same container. Okay, so this is quite convenient because for instance, you don't need a course or, a, uh, or JSONP support for your APIs because this servlet, this uh, CXF servlet that serves your uh, uh, RESTful APIs invocation is served by the very same address and port with respect to uh, the HTTP service that provides the web application. So no need of uh, uh, cross-scripting uh, uh, rules to be enforced there. The domain is the same. Okay, so...
what we learned out of this uh, experience is that uh, in a couple of days it is possible to uh, build quite uh, effective demo on top of OSGI uh, and it is possible also to uh, have different people uh, managing different, completely different technologies like JavaScript and HTML, and HTML on one side and Java and OSGI on the other, you can have these different kind of competencies uh, uh, collaborate and cooperate in a very effective way thanks to the fact that you can turn all JavaScript and HTML5 code base into a web file and you can deploy it quite effectively within uh, the OSGI container. And it is also very uh, convenient to integrate the Apache Caraf and the BND Tools toolchain together. And this can be um, implemented thanks to another quite interesting uh, Caraf uh, feature called uh, uh, Apache Caraf Cave. Cave is a sub-project of Apache Caraf that turns uh, your uh, uh, runtime into an OBR repository. So you can install the Cave feature within Apache Caraf. Then you can install another feature for OBR management. Then you can create an OBR repository out of your running runtime. That means that then you can use the OBR repository within Behind the Tools in order to resolve your project standard development. And uh, Behind the Tools and Apache Caraf share the same OBR repository, so share the same uh, bundles. So you can resolve in BND tools against the very same set of bundles that you uh, use in, uh, in production, let's say. Then the next step is that you can upload the OBR repository that you generated uh, in Caraf to Nexus in order to uh, share the OBR repository content with your colleagues and, and, and in, a, in a quite effective way. So the, the nice thing about Nexus is that uh, um, then you can add also authorization control uh, when it comes to access your artifact uh, available online. And you can automate, uh, again, provisioning and, and uh, bundle fetching operation, leveraging Nexus RESTful APIs as well. So you can integrate these operations uh, and you can automate these kind of operations. We run in a couple of uh, nasty problems as well. Probably the most annoying one was this uh, curse of JavaX transaction. Um, some point in time, the Java folks decided to integrate the JavaX transaction packages uh, within the rt.jar file, within the Java runtime. But unfortunately, uh, they decided to integrate only a part of the JavaX transaction project. So now the situation is that you have a subset of the packages of JavaX transaction pack, uh, project within the Java runtime and another portion of the packages of the JavaX transaction packages outside the rt.jar. And when you try to resolve and to combine this uh, uh, situation together, what you get is this uh, uh, uses constraint violation because basically you have different providers of the same resources in your, in, in your development environment. And to solve that situation, uh, Caraf and BND Tools provides two different approaches. Um, in Apache Caraf, uh, all JavaX packages can be provided in uh, Packages Extra Directive or SGI Directive. That means that you uh, suggest to re-export these kind of packages from the system bundle. So the system bundle will provide the whole set of JavaX transaction packages, and this, of course, will solve the user's constraint violation. So this is the uh, way to solve this kind of problem in Caraf, and it is already done, so uh, the work to be done here is zero. And you can reproduce this very same approach in BND tools, leveraging the RAM system packages directive. So basically you uh, put the JavaX transaction packages in the run system packages directive in order to re-export all these packages from the system bundle so you can solve the problem in BND tools as well. So I think that some pieces are still missing. Um, 
The first point is a better integration between Apache Caraf and BND tools, because I mentioned that it is possible to share the same uh, OBR repository for your bundles uh, in Apache Caraf and BND tools, thanks to the CAVE project, but still you need to manually maintain the run requirements and the uh, run bundles directive in your BND files. So it would be very nice if instead of maintaining by hand this uh, list of, uh, uh, of um, symbolic names, you could somehow uh, inherit this list uh, automatically from Apache Cara features or something similar. I asked uh, BND Tools guys uh, and Peter Krins about that and I think that this is somehow work in progress, work in progress uh, through the concept of uh, unroot distros. So you can define a sort of a fixed set of bundles uh, that you can use to resolve your bundles in uh, this uh, uh, distro file uh, provided by Unroot. Another nice, thing, nice uh, thing that is missing is the support for subsystem. It would be very nice to export all the work that you do within the Andy tools as a subsystem file in order to quickly install uh, the uh, complementary and, uh, and uh, extension bundles that you developed in CARAF as uh, ESA files. And also what we did to integrate this new shield, this new sense hat in the Raspberry Pi is uh, somehow suboptimal because right now the only library that is, that is av available to control the, the, the sense hat is uh, developed in Python. So what we want to do is to port these controlling libraries in Java and to have OSGI running also in the Pi in order to control the I.O. Uh, of the daughter board. Okay, so let me show what all these pieces and all these uh, components uh, produce at the end of the day. <coughs> Okay, first of all, we have Swagger that is documenting our APIs. And of course, this is quite a simple endpoint. Uh, we want just a couple of APIs to uh, provide all the available resources in the system. The nice thing about how many of you know Swagger? Okay, so I don't have to explain much. The nice, the nice thing of Swagger is that it creates a sort of uh, interactive client that you can use in order to play with your APIs and, and, and to get in touch in, uh, with respect how your APIs work and uh, what kind of data they produce. And in fact, we can now play with this API to see what kind of data uh, it produces. And then of course we can uh, also test the other API which is provided by the endpoint. As you can see this API accepts uh, an additional parameter which is the device uh, unique identifier and if we provide this kind of information then we get the data that is generated by the, by the board right now. As I mentioned, this is just a, a, a simple front end to experiment with your APIs, but what you need to present the data is a, an application, is a front end. And so for that, you can use a simple application that we developed in Angular. And is running indeed in, this, in the very same Apache Caraf container that provides all the other capabilities like RESTful endpoints and APIs. And so in this way you can uh, present the data in a, a nicer way than, uh, than uh, invoking uh, raw APIs. So the time that we spent implementing all this was a couple of days, no more than that. And I think that this is quite significant. Uh, on one side we are not that bright, so that means that this could be even shorter than that as a, de as a development cycle. And on the other side we demonstrated that 
the fancy things that you can do in JavaScript or Ruby on Rails, where you can bootstrap an application in a few hours, is also feasible in Java. It, it, it is just a matter of combining the right tools in a seamless way and to automate all the steps that you need in order to create your runtimes and your tool chain. Because the 90% of the time that we waste when we build this kind of a simple applications, uh, we waste the time because we have to set up the runtime and the tool chain. So I think that Apache Caraf is a very convenient way to reduce this, this effort and to uh, streamline the development of this kind of demo applications. So uh, I think that this is it. I don't know if you have question or. Thank you very much. Questions? Thank you.